Hello world, Jordan Ray here, making another video during uh, times of crisis, trying to learn new things and ex explore with new uh, possibilities. This uh, video is going to be a quick one, Google Cloud Functions in the Cloud Platform. Uh, very similar to using Cloud Functions uh, you, well, very similar to the app scripting stuff that I have done, but this is going to be a single function out in the cloud that you can use to actually do a ton of different things. Um, but one of the, uh, probably the most common, is to process data between other functions, maybe things like webhooks or uh, form submitting, things like that. So we're gonna do just something similar to create a function that will then send an HTTP request of its own. It'll take in an HTTP request and then send one out um, and we're gonna have it just log to the sheet. I've already written the app script code, super simple, just a post, uh, a do post that just uh, logs right here to the sheet. Let's uh, go ahead about this. Oh, the one other thing, you have to enable your billing first, I believe, to send an HTTP request. I think you can create a cloud function uh, without your billing account, but you can't really do much with it. You can do some, uh, some cloud processing, but you can't actually access the HTTP functions. So let's get started, let's kick this off. The name of this, I'll just call it demo. Let's call it demonstration function. It does not need much memory. Trigger, you've got tons of different options here. Firebase is another um, databasing solution that Google provides. Uh, PubSub is for, it's, real t it's another real-time service. Gmail has a notifications option that operates with PubSub. You can get Gmail notifications through there. But we're just going to do a simple HTTP trigger, and we're going to end up with this URL at the end. And so that's going to be uh, that's going to be important. And this is our this is the, um, the boilerplate that it gives us to start with. Let's actually start with that. We'll leave the runtime as Node.js eight. Um, six old deprecated, obviously, and then 10 is in beta. 10 probably would be just fine if um, that uh, the version matters to you. I'm not even sure myself what differences happened between eight and 10. Um, so eight will work just fine for this demonstration. Let's create this thing and get started. There is an inline editor here. We will, for this video, we're gonna just use the inline editor. But you can actually uh, do all of this on a local machine and then push it up into the cloud. And when you develop on your local machine, you actually have a lot more, um, you have a lot more control over this, over uh, uh, what you're doing. And for something like this, where you can install pa node packages from NPM, that is super beneficial. But for a simple demonstration, we can operate just in the cloud. I'm gonna wait until this stops spinning because it's gonna run some deployment stuff. Okay, so it is done. That actually took a couple of minutes for the spinning to finish and actually spin up into the cloud, our demonstration function. Let's click in to the demonstration function and see what we have. Information on how often it runs. Because cloud functions are not a constant thing that are running out in the cloud. These only happen when they are triggered. When that HTTP request comes through, that's when this will actually be triggered. Um, we can get some monitoring information. This is uh, not really the point of this. Here's our trigger URL and the source itself we're going to actually um let's this is just a preview yeah we don't want to edit here 
and testing, we can get some console logging. Let's click on edit on the top toolbar here. Go in and, um, well, you know what? First, let's go back to our trigger and let me, let's uh, run the trigger and we get this hello world. So that is defined right here, 200, and then we're sending this message, hello world. If we make a post request, oh, this little square, there we go, perfect. If we make a post request to that endpoint, we can grab it off of this request parameter that comes through, and then the response, res, is the response that gets sent out. A lot of this can be read more clearly on the Express.js documentation, but the response and the request are, are uh, super common ways of doing this in Node. Different uh, computer, sorry, different programming languages do it differently, but uh, that's what we're using here with Node. So what we wanna do is actually take in a request, let's grab the headers off of there. And I believe we can say request.headers. And we're not gonna use this message anymore. We aren't going to respond here just yet. We actually wanna do a fetch. We're gonna put in the URL for our project here. Let's just grab that. And let's come over back to our function. Let's make this fetch request. And we need to pass an object with a method post. And we need to give a body. And that's going to be json.stringify. And let's pass in the headers. And I think that should be enough, um, except for let's uh, fetch, and then we need to call den. This is where our response is gonna come from. And this is where we're gonna actually respond from the hello world function. So the this fetch will go out asynchronously happen and when that returns, that's when our function ends. And we'll say status 200 and send message. And I think I commented out message here. And I need to put this back up here. I'm gonna change the let to a const because we're not actually changing that. And there we go. Now. I'm not totally sure this is gonna work, but we are going to give it give it everything we got. And you know, <laughs> as I do that, I realize we can't fetch. Fetch is a package that is available if you're running JavaScript in the browser, but because this is Node, we need to actually install a package that's going to use fetch. Now to do that, because we don't have, or at least I haven't figured out how to use the command line yet in line, we can put in the dependencies, dependencies ourself, and ooh, I cannot type. And we're gonna add, I believe we can use node fetch. NPM is the package repository, node package manager, and node fetch will work. Yeah, that'll work for us. So come back over here to its dependencies. I'm gonna add node fetch, and I'm just gonna write latest as the version. This is where you can do versioning stuff and I'll come back over to index. 
And at the very top, I'm going to declare that dependency, fetch. So now let's go ahead and deploy, updating the function. This might take a minute because it actually has to install that dependency. Okay, it has finished spinning again. I guess everything has installed. If we come back over to the trigger, let's go ahead and just run it. This is just another get request to our cloud function. We get the hello world message. And if we come to our temp sheet, we can take a look at all those headers that get passed in there. Um, these are the headers that I've pulled off of the get request. Um, things like it tells you here where the, the, the server this is being hosted on, US Central somewhere, the browser that I made the get request from, the user agent. Um, what else? Interest, anything else interesting in here? Mm. Not really. But there we go. We have made a, we've added a little um, intermediary between our Google Sheet and the cloud. So how, how to summarize this? Let's come back over to the code. We've created a function that really just acts, yeah, acts as an intermediary between the request being made in the browser and the script that we um, have hosted on our account, right? So there we go. The, the, lots of stuff that you could process in here. Maybe if you were um, using a contact form and you wanted to save everything in a spreadsheet, you could do some uh, validation steps in here. There's other NPM packages that you can install and validator is one. And you could pull off form data and then you could run it through stuff like is email. You can add it's tons of little uh, functions in here that will help you to validate data. So that's one super useful thing you can do with these cloud functions. And then you don't have to ever host a server for a simple website. Super cool way to do that. Um, if you want more, de if you're interested in how to set this up locally, just give me a comment below. Let me know that you're interested in that and I will go through the uh, steps to do exactly that. Otherwise, I will talk to you next time.